Hi, I'm Rick Gonzalez, and this is my presentation for Selling Performance Psychology for Psych 613. A little background on myself. I am a student at National University, uh, finishing up my final two classes in Masters of Arts in Performance Psychology. Um, I have this class and my thesis project. Prior to this, I was an undergrad at National for the Sports Psychology Program. So I've been really um, into sports psychology, researching, studying, learning since 2012, so about for five years. Um, outside of this, I own and operate two CrossFit gyms, as well as run a, a PE program for grades K through 8. And this summer, I will be the head cross-country coach for the same school, um, which will be a unique experience because I've never been a coach for a sports organization like this. And I never ran cross country, so I'll try to use what I know with uh, strength and conditioning, fitness, um, running, and performance psychology, and how it kind of works together. And I've been fortunate that I've been going through this program um, while um, working through fitness and strength and conditioning, so I've been able to apply a lot of the skills, and um, hopefully I can kind of share that with you today. Now, the first question I usually get asked is, what is performance psychology? When people hear it, they think of, they have these own perceptions of performance psychology as if it's like a magic pill or, or uh, like a special technique that you would use to basically magically improve performance or create change in somebody. And, you know, it's not that, um, it's not that awesome. It is, pretty, it is pretty great, but it doesn't work that way. Um, performance psychology is basically understanding psychological principles and using that so that you can understand behavior in a performance context. When I say performance context, that could be performing arts, you know, dance, uh, theater, music. It could be an uh, athletic um, context. It can be in a military context. It can be in a business-related context. So with that being said, uh, there are really two different types of people that practice performance psychology, and those are the Applied, they might be called performance psychology consultants, or the, the term I prefer is mental skills coach, or they're in some kind of academic capacity, either researching or teaching. And so those are the two main um, fields. So in, in the application part, you're probably wondering, how can it benefit me? How can the study and understanding of human behavior and athletic performance, how can it benefit me? Well, to start, I want you to think of performance in any domain as having three main components. There's the physical component, the technical component, and the mental component. Now, when you think of the physical component, I want you to think of the things that, these are natural abilities, these are also things that you can train, right? Maybe train in a weight room or train on a track, train on a, a field of play, but these are things that either, either you're born with or these are things that you train. Big, broad muscle groups. The technical aspects are things that you practice. Right? These are the strategies, these are the techniques, these are the, the uh, movement patterns that you would practice for the technical aspects of, of, of the movements. And then the mental, and this kind of goes into the cognitive strategies you would use, the emotional and the thoughts that go through your head. Now some activities, such as, let's take running for example, some activities might be a lot more physical and a lot less technical, whereas other activities such as throwing darts or uh, playing music would require a lot more technical and a lot less physical, right? But in order to play music, you still have to have some physical dexterity. You have to have some good posture. And to run, there is some technique in running. There is some strategy, some mental strategy in terms of pacing yourself. But also other people, if I ask you, someone to define some of the physical aspects, people are gonna be like, I want more leg strength. Uh, I, need, I need to be faster, I need more endurance. If some people are gonna define the technical aspect, they're gonna be like, I need to learn this place. I need to learn this number. I need to memorize things. I need to, to, um, I need to have a better understanding of where I'm supposed to place my feet or my hands. The mental aspect, a lot of people, when asked what that is, they might say things like mental toughness, things that are harder to quantify. So they might say mental toughness, determination, willpower, motivation, confidence. And that's true. Those are things. It's a little harder for people to find what those are. But if you can work on the skills and techniques to basically improve those mental things, such as improve uh, emotional responses, improved confidence, improved motivation, then you can improve the physical aspect. 
right? If you can get more motivation so that you can work out more, you might be able to get stronger for your sport. If you can have the willpower and determination to, to practice over and over and over again, or if you can have the ability to recover after you made a technical mistake so that you can continue going, a lot of that is mental. So the way I want you to think of any one of these, and what you see is you see there's a, there's a two-way street with every one of these, um, these skills, right? So think of this as a circle and everything affects each other. If you improve any one of these things, you're going to improve everything else. Okay, that's just how it works. If you're a football player and you get stronger, it's going to be easier to master the mental aspect, right? You're going to feel more confident. And also, it's going to make it easier for you to learn some of the technical uh, parts of the movement. And the same goes with everything. So we focus on the mental. And I want you to think of that as like miracle growth. Okay? If we improve this, it's going to help you improve these. It doesn't mean you, you forget about these. These are important aspects to your performance. But this is our focus. Okay? And this is why we believe that everybody should have uh, performance psychology or a mental skills coach as part of your performance training team. Now, performance psychology, psychology, a lot of people get uh, held up on that word. And the way I like to think about it is this. What we, what, what as a performance psychologist or a mental skills coach does is kind of like the way a physical therapist and a strength and conditioning coach relationships work. If you have a generally healthy person, a healthy person might see a strength and conditioning coach to make themselves stronger. They might see uh, a strength and conditioning coach to make themselves faster, develop more explosiveness. But what happens when they get hurt? They don't see the strength and conditioning coach. No, they see the physical therapist or they see the doctor. So I want you to think of this side of the health of, this, of the line is somebody who is less than healthy, someone who needs to get back to normal. I want you to think of a psychologist in the traditional sense, a clinician or a counselor, that's people that are working with this population. What a mental skills coach does is they work on the healthy population to make them better. It's taking somebody who is well and making them better, right? Make them fit. And so that's how I want you to think of it. I want you to think of the mental skills coach as a part of the performance training team just like you would a nutritionist or a strength and conditioning coach or a special skills coach. Now keep in mind, just like any, any of those nutritionists, strength and conditioning coach, special skills coach, most of the time for, for generally well-developed athletes or a well-developed coaching program, it's going to be a marginal influence. And that's important to know. If we're looking for small, minute gains. And that's the, that's the idea. Now some people that are uh, a little bit more Maybe they have a lot, a lot of confidence issues. Maybe they have a lot of, of issues planning and preparing. And um, so that might be a bigger influence on them. But for the most part, we can expect marginal influences. It may be hard to quantify some of these things without assessment forms, but these are things that we know that the, this stuff works. The techniques and strategies we use work, but it is going to be small. And that's why we focus on a process-oriented um, program. Just like your strength conditioning coach doesn't expect you one day of bench pressing isn't going to make you strong, but several weeks of bench pressing is going to definitely make you stronger. The mental skills works the same way. You have to continue to practice these things. You have to use those skills. So the system that we like to use, I like to take it from um, instructional design. It's a systems approach. Okay. Now, we believe that everybody should develop their own system, and we have a system that we use to basically implement into somebody's training program. And that system's approach, the acronym is ADDIE, A-D-D-I-E. And as simple as this, you analyze the sport and you analyze the athlete. What are the, what are the demands of the sport and what's, what does the athlete come with? What do they come, in, come into the game with, right? So if the demands of the sport require speed and strength, and the athlete has a certain amount of speed and strength, or if they want to improve on those things, then that's one thing we need to work on. Right? But we focus on more on the, the mental approach, and if those things are there, remember, mental skills can help improve speed and strength by improving motivation, improving your ability to plan appropriately, set goals. So what we do is we figure out what's, what's the issue, right? Maybe, it's, uh, maybe your cognitive strategies are a little off. Maybe you need to learn new skills. Once we have that, we have to decide what to actually focus on. So we pick one or two things, and that's what we focus on. And we call it kind of a triage type uh, process. And a triage is basically taking the, the 
the most damaging wound first and treating that first, and then you go to the other, the other ones, right? So if somebody has a gunshot wound, you would treat that before somebody who skinned their knee or skinned their arm. So you have to decide what you're gonna focus on. And from there, you develop a program. Now, this is important, okay? Because now what we do, this is where we come in, this is why what we do is so important is that we have a lot of tools in our toolbox to help, to help develop those skills. For example, if you want to get stronger, your strength conditioning coach is gonna have a plan. But how does that fit into your overall uh, goals, right? So your strength conditioning coach has a plan for you to get stronger, but setting goals and having an established goal and, and writing it down and setting it is you're more likely to achieve that physical standard or the technical practice it takes to basically learn a new skill. And that's where we help develop that program. It might be breathing techniques. Maybe you get a little anxiety um, when you're up in front of a performance, um, in a performance context. Maybe you get a little competitive anxiety. Maybe you have to work on some breathing. Maybe you have to work on um, a cognitive strategy such as some, some thoughts where you basically have to tell yourself, like, I can do this, I can do this. And over time, then what that does is that helps improve your self-confidence and gives you the ability to do something that normally would make you really scared. So we develop that. Then we have to implement. And this is important, too. And develop and implement. These are important things because you can't just take everything and do it all at once. You have, a, you have relationships. You have... Um, you have work, you have school, you have other obligations in your life that's gonna take up a lot of your resources. It would be silly of me to think that this is the most important thing, or anybody for that matter, to think that what they do is the most important thing in your life. So what we have to do is we have to figure out what's important in your life and what we can implement, because I'd rather implement one small thing than many things, despite the fact that you may need a lot of things we have to figure out where that fits with you. We have to make sure your recovery is there. We have to make sure your uh, ability to adhere to the program is there. And then finally, what we do is we evaluate. We make sure that the, the thing is working. We make sure it's not a detrimental to true performance. So we have to make sure that that. We have constant assessments and evaluations. This can be through, done through actual physical assessments. It can be done through just talking and saying, hey, do you feel like there's an improvement in your performance? So this is, this is performance psychology. This is why we believe it works, and this is our approach to, to implementing a systems approach into your, uh, into your training process, whether you're a coach or an athlete. That's all I have for today. Thank you for your time.